Dame Alice Kittler was born in 1263 to a wealthy merchant family in Kilkenny. She was an only child and enjoyed a privileged upbringing, demonstrating early on that she had inherited her father's business sense. Indeed, she became a formidable businesswoman in her own right, and it would be fair to say that those surrounding her would have been intimidated by this. Alice's rise inspired much neighbourhood jealousy and a lot of malicious gossip. Alice made a decent living as a moneylender. She married William Outlaw, himself a merchant and moneylender, in 1280. She opened what is now known as Kittler's Inn shortly after the birth of her son, who was also named William. Following the death of her husband, Alice remarried. In 1302, she and her second husband, Adam Leblond, another wealthy moneylender, were suspected of killing her first husband. Nothing came of those suspicions. However, when Leblond died suddenly, having transferred much of his worldly wealth to Alice's son, despite having had children of his own from previous marriages, suspicions were aroused once more. By 1309, Alice had again remarried. This time she was betrothed to a wealthy landowner called Richard Duval. A few years later, he too passed away under mysterious circumstances. Her stepchildren were now very suspicious of Kittler's ever-increasing wealth, coupled with what appeared to be a very unfortunate string of bad luck, with three husbands now deceased. But when her fourth husband, John Le Poir, fell ill in 1324, and his children became suspicious, this time action was taken. Their father was preparing to change his will in Alice's favour, but they managed to convince him that he was being poisoned. One story tells that John searched for evidence of his wife's alleged alchemy, and that he found several mysterious items which he presented to the new Bishop of Ossory, Richard Ledred. Whether this element is true or not, he did express concern before his death that he had indeed been poisoned, and the children accused Alice of attempted murder and of consorting with devils. Soon after, Bishop Ledred formally accused Dame Alice Kittler, her son and her associates, of witchcraft and heresy. Ledred wrote to Roger Outlaw, Chancellor of Ireland, demanding her arrest using a papal decree. But the Chancellor was Kittler's brother-in-law, and one of a few friends that she had in high places. The Chancellor refused the Bishop's demand, stating that a public prosecution would be required, and that the alleged witches would need to be excommunicated, and forty days would then need to pass before they could proceed. Bishop Ledred summoned Alice Kittler to appear before him, but she had already fled to Dublin, and was seeking protection and advice from her powerful consorts there. In her absence, the bishop excommunicated her, and in line with the Chancellor's ruling, set a date for her son William to appear and answer to charges of heresy and the protection of heretics. However, William Outlaw Jr. also had friends in high places, and one of them was the Seneschal, Arnold Le Poir. Le Dred was urged to drop the case, and when he refused, he himself was imprisoned and questioned for 17 days. On his release, Ledred continued in his attempts to have Kittler arrested, but he continued to face resistance and outright hostility from Le Poir. Alice Kittler had also made approaches to the authorities in Dublin, accusing Ledred of defamation of her character and of excommunicating her without a summons. Ledred was summoned to appear at the court in Dublin, but was initially reluctant as he feared his passage from Kilkenny would not be safe given Kittler's powerful connections. What ensued was essentially a battle between the church and the state, and given the power of the church at that time, it soon became evident that despite her powerful connections, time was running out for Alice and her accomplices. When the bishop returned from Dublin, he demanded that they be arrested. 
Now interred at Kilkenny Castle, Alice's maid, Petronella de Meath, succumbed to interrogation under torture and confessed that she and Kittler were indeed guilty. It is possible that Petronella's spirit had been broken at this point and that she just said what she thought her accusers wanted to hear. Aside from stating that she and Alice could fly and that her mistress had engaged in sexual acts with a demon, Petronella said that she had, at Alice's instigation, sacrificed in three places to devils, in each of which places she had sacrificed three cocks at crossroads without the city to a certain demon who called himself Robert, one of the inferior order from hell, by shedding their blood and tearing them limb from limb, from the intestines of which with spiders and black worm-like scorpions, with a certain plant called milfoil, and other plants and disgusting worms, along with the brain and the swaddling bands of a child dead without baptism, she in the skull of a certain thief who had been beheaded, and on the instruction of the said Alice, made many confections, ointments and powders for afflicting the bodies of the faithful, and for producing love and hatred, and for making the faces of certain women on the use of certain incantations appear to certain persons to be horned like goats. The accusations made against Alice and her associates were committing heresy, sacrificing to demons, communing with demons, magically excommunicating, making love and hate potions to corrupt Christians, murdering her past husbands, and engaging in an affair with a demon. The fate of Alice would have been sealed if it were not for one final helping hand from her brother-in-law, Roger Outlaw. The dungeon guards outside her cell were heavily beaten, allowing Alice to escape and to flee to England. In her absence, Alice was found guilty, and her assets were seized. But her servant, Petronella, wasn't so lucky. She was flogged and burnt at the stake in Kilkenny city centre on the 3rd of November 1324. Alice's son William was given a penance. He was ordered to attend three masses every day, to give some of his money to the poor and to repair the roof of the nearby cathedral. Alice's former home, Kittler's Inn, is now a popular bar and restaurant. An unidentified female is said to haunt the venue. Staff have claimed that a presence is often felt in the bar and that a black shadow was even captured in a photo. Some believe it is Alice's maid, Petronella, that haunts the pub. It is believed that Alice herself haunts a staircase at St. Canisius Cathedral, but following her exile, nobody really knows what became of her. So, was Dame Alice Kittler really a witch? Or was she a serial killer? Or was she just unlucky in love and the victim of jealous and suspicious minds? The jury is still out. <laughs>